Great morning, holy brothers! Thank you so much for joining us on our pathway to peace inside the Garden of Peace. If you're following along, we're on page 271. And today's lesson is called Hurling Husbands. Here we go. Be consistent with your compliments, buddy. And do them often, right? And when you give them, don't ever, God forbid, take them back. Some people are like, they're so happy that something was done. They found out it wasn't exactly what they wanted. Like, no, I'm not so happy about that anymore. Like, what's the problem? It's free for you. Make them happy. Use kind words. Give them compliments. And make them feel like queens. That's it. Don't be so selfish. If she brushes them off, your compliments, or if she's not listening to your real sincerity that's coming out because you want to make her happy, it's only because she wants to prove to herself Sometimes that you really, what? Mean it. Mean it. Yes. A woman can tell many times, like when the kids ask them to get an iced tea from downstairs. So we train them then to should jump up and say, thank you, Tati, for the missed opportunity. <laughs> Sometimes they're mad. I don't want to get it. I said, say thank you for the missed opportunity. Thank you, David. <laughs> Hello? They're going to know if you have your heart in it or not. So when you take out the garbage, put a smile on your face, and be excited. Look what I get to do. It's my mitzvah opportunity. I get to make her happy. It's not only just a great mitzvah, but it's going to enhance my world. It's going to be better if I make her happy for it. You got to do it anyway. She's going to be pissed off. She's going to be thrilled. Why not just put a smile on her face? Do things with the right attitude from the get-go and be sincere about it. Be real. Make it your actual heart. So as often as you can, at appropriate times, Repeat your praises. The Rashi's Chachma writes that it is even permitted to falsely flatter for the sake of peace in the home. You're allowed to lie. Yes. For peace in the home, you're allowed to lie. If she doesn't look gorgeous, she looks like the ugliest thing you've ever seen, walking on two feet. She spent an hour getting ready. We said this many times before. Tell her she looks great. Even if she asks you, like, does this make me look fat? No, it doesn't. It's a gorgeous dress. And I think that you look spectacular. If she put the time, she put the effort, you know, she thought this was going to be good. Make her feel like it's really worth it for her. Beauty is in the eye of the beholder. So, somebody else might not think she looks pretty, but you might think she does. No problem. It's an opinion. It's not a fact. So give her compliments. But when, God forbid, a husband hurls insults, incredible insults at his wonderful wife, it's as if he's plunging the knife into her heart. Insults reverberate. Inside her, after being stabbed so loudly, and so much more than praises do. As much good as you can do with a word, you can do 20 times worse also with something that you say. Every time she hears his words in her head, repeating over and over again, she's going to relive that pain and relive that moment of uncomfortableness, of insults. Therefore, it is as if he's killing her several times over and over and over a day. She feels that her husband doesn't care about her and perhaps maybe even hates her or now he doesn't think she's pretty anymore. And she, her self-confidence dips and splats on the floor. There is no greater suffering for a wife. A wife cannot overlook an unpleasant comment from her husband. Guys can let things roll right off their shoulders, but a woman is going to stick like crazy glue. Rabbi Ben Sion Abishol of Blessed Memory wrote, It is an everyday occurrence that couples argue, that couples fight and get to the point of divorce. She wants to leave you. That's it. I'm done with you. I had enough. All because once, one time, and he doesn't even remember, he something, said something not nice. He said something cruel towards her, and she cannot forget it. It's like an elephant, man. They're going to pound through your room and destroy everything. They never forget. Even people who are amazing in Shalom Bias will be tested. Even me. Can you imagine? <laughs> it will come a point that you screw up. You say something wrong. You didn't realize. You're off your game. You got in a bad mood for a second. Yeah, you're amazing 99.999% of the time. But nobody's perfect. Nobody. And if they are, then they're lying to you. Has a, it's, like, it's like platonic relationships, right? Do they really exist? I don't think so! Why? 
that either the guy who's spending all the time with this woman, either he's completely lying, that he doesn't have feelings for her, or he's gay. It's one of the two. Pick one. <laughs> Had the husband just thought for a moment, he would never have said that thing that he messed up. If you could go back in time and show him where he made a mistake, yeah, yeah, I really want to take that back. Hindsight 2020. You show somebody a video and you ask them what the right thing to do is, and you could be looking at your situation back again and say, how could I ever have said something so dumb? Take yourself out of the moment. Now, somebody comes to me and says, here, two things I can say to my wife. Which one should I do? I say, which one should you do? How is that even a question in your mind? And if I asked them about you, Moshe, they would have said, no, no of course you got to say that. But when it comes to themselves, they're blinded. Can't see it. They lose complete sight and track of everything right. If he would have thought for a moment, he never would have said that thing. And literally, he would have saved his marriage. On the positive side, a husband who calls a widow's wife's heart with a real, sincere, genuine, honest compliment that he means. To the point that she's willing to work all day long for that one little praise that's going to await her. Peace in the home depends on our choice of words. It takes two to tango, is a very American westernized concept. The guy is the one who's going to set the tone for the relationship. I don't care how upset, how mad the wife is, what the husband says is going to set the tone for the day, for the marriage, for life. You can save it or you can destroy it. It's just a matter of if you're going to let your ego go or you want to be the one who has to defend themselves, put their hands up and strike back at her in the face and give her a bloody nose. The Zohar teaches how Adam, Adam, the first man, praised Eve, his wife. What did he say? How much love was there in what Adam said to Eve? The Zohar says, You are the bones of my bones. You are the flesh of my flesh. So how could I despise or abandon you? Adam wanted to show her that they were in fact one. They came from one. They are one and forever will be one. And there is nothing that could ever separate them from that. That's who she is. What are you going to do? When he said about her, to this shall be called woman. Right? Isha. He meant, this is the woman whose equal could never be found. From the past, from now, for the future, for all eternity. She is the honor of my home, my bias, and all other women all other females, now or that will ever come, are like monkeys compared to her. Yes, when she was created, there were only other monkeys for him to compare her to. There was no other woman around. So literally, he wasn't lying to her. They're all monkeys compared to you. But you can say the same thing too nowadays. She is perfect in all her traits. From the Zohar. These are the words of love and affection that Adam said to his wife. The Zohar continues, Every man should say, even more words of love and affection to his wife. For behold, it is written, quote unquote, many daughters did valiantly, but you exceeded them all. From Proverbs 31, 29, black and white. By telling his wife that she's superior to all other women, he says, he will increase the love and affection between the two of them. That's it. You have the formula. You know what to say. Why wouldn't you do it? What planet are you living on? Where is your mind? The self-righteous evil inclination may fly in at this point and object. The Yetzirah is going to jump right in there. How can this be right? How are you supposed to actually be the one to tell lies to your wife and compliment a wife for characteristics and attributes that she doesn't have? What, are you going to give her a false sense of security? You're going to give her some hope? Now, maybe she's going to run with that and try to use those things in other aspects of life because she thinks she has them, but that's going to be completely false and empty and not invalid. Is this really what Hashem wants? The HR is going to jump in. He's going to say, she shouldn't lie. Be nice, but don't lie. To this, the Talmud, the Gemara, the Tractates answer, whoever dwells without a wife dwells without joy, without blessing, without goodness, and without Torah, without a protective wall in front of him. The Zohar adds that he also lives without peace, 
He lives without help. He lives without atonement. He lives without wisdom. He lives without life and without a will, and without wealth, and he'll never have true honor. If the Talmud and the Zohar are saying all of this about a husband who's lacking a wife, then a husband can definitely say to his wife, in all sincerity, based on what we just learned, that guess what? Even if she doesn't realize to feel it, you should know from what we just read, from what we just said, from the teachings, that to his wife, you are my joy. You are my blessing. You are my absolute good. You are my Torah. You are my boundaries. You are my help. You are my atonement. You are my life. And you are my will. You are my wealth. And you are my honor. Because without her, a man has none of it. So when you say that to her, you are literally speaking MS. You are speaking the truth. Based on our words, from our Torah, from our sages, from reality. So what? You don't feel it. So what? You don't recognize how amazing she is to you. But by definition, you would never have it without her. So the fact that you have her and you have it is worth all the blessings in the world. You hear? You hear? Mm -hmm. Love. L-O-V to the E. Ahava. The gematria of Ahava is? What is it? Um, 13? Um, the same thing as one. Echad. One. Eight plus one is nine plus five. Um, five, yes? Yeah. Five. Echad. The oneness, the connection that you have between when you become one with your wife is the Ahava. When you give to another person, when you're able to do for them and show them your limitless love and giving, that's when you become one with them. If you're willing to hold back, you want to be selfish, you want to be just for yourself, then you're not giving, you're not having love. The root of love is giving. That's it. The Torah instructs us, love your fellow human as yourself. Leviticus 19.18 Abu Chaim Vital writes that one's wife is also considered a fellow human. Love your fellow human as yourself. Does that not include your wife? Hello? At the basic Fundamental level. Our rabbis interpret this commandment of loving your fellow as yourself, as follows. That which is hateful to you, right? Don't do to your friend. Rabbi Kiva says, this is the greatest rule of all the Torah. Rabbi Kiva meant that this commandment contains all the other commandments concerning a man and another fellow man. It means that we should treat others as we ourselves want to be treated. And if you want others to love you, you want others to respect you, to respect your wishes, to respect your property, to respect your time, then behave with them that way. The same exact way that you would want to be treated. And if you don't want someone to upset you, if you don't want someone to hurt you, you don't want someone to cheat you, then be careful never ever to do those things to another person, that's how you have to have a relationship. Not just the fact that, oh, you know, here's what I want, so this is what I would do for somebody else. But whatever somebody would not like. When somebody came in and they said, oh, somebody left a tissue on my table, it was disgusting, here in the shul, why can't they just throw it away? It bothers them. They want to come in and have a nice, clean place to sit. So when I get up in the morning, I go around the shul, I clean up, if there's any garbage, I'll take some other tissues and pick it up and throw it away. If there's extra water bottles, there's sedurum left around, why am I cleaning up? Not just for the niceness of the shul, because I want to have the shul look gorgeous, because when I know when someone, oh, when I come to sit down, I wouldn't want a messy place in my place. I don't want to go to my office and find my kids trashed it and left it a mess. I don't want to see my sink, my wife says, comes home full of dirty dishes. You think that makes her happy? No, it's going to upset her. Now that she had to do extra stuff that she didn't even dirty, if it upsets somebody else in the slightest, go out of your way to make some extra effort to make them super happy. And then when they come in, they have a smile on their face rather than be upset. Go, a simple action. What would I like to have done to me? But also, what I wouldn't like to have done around my world, in my atmosphere, in my vision, in my four amos, that is what we should go to do for our friends to make them feel amazing. Let your friends honor be as beloved to you as your own. Ethics of our fathers. 
two times. The Torah definition of loving others is to be good to them, to treat them well, and to avoid hurting them in any possible way. That's what it means to love others. Get it? There are those who say that they love their wives. Yeah, I love her. She's fantastic. Yet, if we would actually evaluate their love for their wives against this definition, we would see that many times their behavior, their actions, and their speech are far from loving, my friends. The words that come out of their mouth, that is not love. Before you say something to your wife, stop for a second. Is this what I'm about to say? This phrase, this comment, these words, are they loving words or are they hurting words? Or are they neutral words, which are also hating words? Use pure positivity. Give them love. Give them happiness. Give them kind words. Not only are you fulfilling the love of your fellow as yourself, a Torah commandment, but you're building up the beauty in your home. Watch it. Use your teeth. Use your lips to carefully guard every word that you say for only bracha, for blessing, and for absolute, real, genuine love. With that, have an awesome day, Amazing rest of your day.